uh, in regard to keeping the spark alive, which is what we get asked about a lot. First is play. Don't stop playing. Play, flirt, dance, poke, tease in a loving way. Like, don't forget how to play together. Those that play together stay together. Yes. And your your version of play might look different than the next couples or whatever, but it's important that you talk about what feels like play or or when, when you did have a playful moment, like express to your partner how much you loved that, how much it lit you up, or when you're in a moment of fun or flirt, just like being present in the moment and like, man, that was so great. And you connect over that moment and it's locked in your brain. It's like putting a pin in it on a cork board. And so your partner is more like likely to remember and and just have awareness that that is important to you. Um, and then the, the second one in regard to keeping the spark alive is just having a basic foundational understanding of the masculine and feminine energies that exist within each of us and which hat you're putting on and then how that dynamic plays out in relationship. If your partner is a dominant masculine and if I'm a dominant feminine like or vice versa or whatever, you need to know how those energies play together so that you can create more polarity, more spark in in the bedroom, in life. I mean, sex can be all day. It's not just the act. It's how you're interacting with each other moment to moment. And then the last thing I will say in regard to conflict is become aware, invite yourself into the awareness of when you are telling yourself a story about your partner and how you're taking a situation and making it, you're creating narrative, you're creating a story that could be 100% false. A quick example would be she's feeling really low and sad because all he wants to do is work. So she, you know, says to him, like, all you're doing is working, all you're doing is working. And he's like, I'm providing for us. Rather, if she comes to him and says, the story that I'm telling myself is that when you're choosing to work, what I'm feeling is I feel sad, I feel lonely, and it feels like you'd rather be at work than with the family. Is, is any, that true? <laughs> is, that's the next line. Is yeah, I know. The story is, is any of that true? Yeah. And then you're giving your partner an opportunity to either confirm like, yeah, actually, I'm, that is kind of true and here's why and let's work through this. Or it's like, oh my God, no, babe, no. I know that we're taking a vacation in three months and I'm picking up some extra shifts because I want us to have a really wonderful time and I'm doing this for us. He's just now rescued her from that story that she's created in her own mind. And so if we bring those stories to our partner with the right wording, which is comes back to communication, none of us are taught this usually by our parents. Um, hopefully we'll be able to teach our kid that, but being in the first the first part of that is being able to understand and recognize when you're telling yourself a story that may or may not be true. 